Good morning, folks. We've got incredible news stories for you today. Storms, science, health, and a bit of space weather, too. Let's begin with our star over at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on the sun were very calm. But bottom right, you can see the dark patches of the departing coronal hole and parts of its intensified solar wind stream impacted Earth overnight. Middle panel in purple. Plasma speed bumped up over 650 kilometers per second. That's well over a million miles an hour, by the way. But up top in orange, we see that it was not a dense impact, relatively sparse, actually. And so Earth's magnetic field taking it very easily. Minor signals only on the magnetometers and KP index. Major weather coverage begins in Australia, where the snow fell and fell. Some of these regions haven't seen snow in decades. Up next, this really happened. Lightning blasted through the windshield of a car in Oregon. Tornadoes in Europe up next. From Luxembourg to Amsterdam and all around them, the rough storms dropped yesterday, becoming a bit more common in Europe the last few years. And of course, we have the typhoon. 13 dead, even more missing, and the rescues will be ongoing for a while today as enormous inundations are taking over southeastern China. Up first in the science articles is space weather and human health. It's not enough just to see the correlations with solar flares, geomagnetic storms, and cosmic rays. We need the mechanism. Well, one of the best that has been proposed and one we've covered and discussed for years is the potassium channel within cells. From microscale cell processes to the signal that commands the heart to beat to critical brain functions and neural processes throughout the body. Turns out, it's just that potassium in those channels, no water. Now this bolsters the hypothesized mechanism of action because while water is conductive, it's not quite as electric as a potassium ion and would somewhat shield the pathway from influence. Now we know that is not happening, making this a more attractive candidate for many of the health correlations with space weather that have been discovered. Up next we go to EcoStress. I had genuinely wondered what sort of products would come out of this project and here we go. Detailed evaporative stress comparing the Costa Rican drought zone to the regions that are going to get rain all the time simply due to their geography. We're stepping outside the Earth next. Hubble's latest Jupiter shot. Now as pretty as this is, I would like to use it to make another point. Does it look spherical or flattened? It's not the tilt or an illusion. Jupiter, Saturn, Earth, pretty much every planet has an equatorial bulge due to its spin. However, the Sun does not. The sun defies all physical reason and sense. At most, they have measured a 10 kilometer bulge, but that could honestly have been a chromospheric or photospheric filament or magnetic area. And even if that 10 kilometer bulge was real, that's nothing on the sun. The sun's refusal to bulge tells us something terrifying about it, that something beyond the dynamo is going on inside of it, and it does something terrible every few thousand years. Speaking of NOVA-like events, a solid study from Keck describes how NOVA can occur in various ways, and this is a key point for many reasons. Sometimes, all you need is a sprinkling of dust. And now things get weird, because we're talking about massive mental changes, including the birth of imagination around 70,000 years ago. Well, that time is exactly when the greatest sight in human history occurred, the actual real crossing of the red planet, except it was a binary star system called Shoal Star. It almost certainly passed through the system 70,000 years ago, and no, it hasn't returned, and we see it clearly heading off in the same direction we'd expect from our encounter in ancient times. And for those who are aware of the issue of rapid changes in the pictographic art from the ancients, from real-life forms to wild, unreal images, this would be what the article is talking about. What better inspiration for the survivors than the destroyer? Some great news here, folks. Hopefully we remember a few days ago how ALMA owned Hubble on deep space and how the galactic density that far out was a major problem for dark matter cosmology. Well now the study has been made free to read in full on Cornell's preprint archive, linked below, and a terrific move for any scientist who wants their research known. Up next, this is news but not for the reason they want it to be. Yes. They made some math work for a concept of dark matter that was born during inflation, just before the bang. You know what else they made the math work for originally? Every dark matter search range ever. That's why they got the funding to look there. Simple as that. But alas, they do demonstrate one critical piece of logic I've never seen from Johns Hopkins before. 
They expressly recognized that if dark matter was something like the wimps they think came after the Big Bang, we'd probably have found them already. Brilliant! Brilliant! Up next, for all those Harvard professors over the years who were sick of fighting the fluoride industry alone, here are some friends with PhDs to help you out. The whole story, in short, is that Harvard has been saying for over a decade it kills brain cells and reduces IQ. Now we know there are liver and kidney issues as well. FYI on that space weather potassium channel thing, major coverage of the health connection in our book, and our app sends the only space weather health alerts in the world. Sent one for electrons earlier this week, actually. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.